Hey guys, thanks for joining me for this video. I already recorded the main content and this is gonna be a really good, really valuable video where I basically explain the most important things you can do as a print on demand seller to be successful over the long haul. So let's get started. Quick reminder to enter my free weekly print on demand giveaway. Two winners are selected every single week. This week sponsored by Merch Titans Upload Automation, Merch Ninja Research Tools for Print On Demand, and All Sunset's premium pre-made graphics for your designs. Also in the description, you can find a link to my eight-day print on demand mini course that's really helpful with the Printful and Etsy integration, and a link to my print on demand Facebook group. If you're not in there, you should join. It's awesome. All right, now let me get to the main video. Hey guys, so I was feeling inspired to make this video today after doing a consulting call. I do take one-on-one -on -one consultations. I don't take that many of them, but I do put a link in the description of the videos in case you wanted to consider booking a call with me to talk about whatever. Um, today I was talking with somebody about print-on-demand success. It's a pretty common topic for me to be talking about with somebody. Uh, and I was also talking to one of the students in my print-on-demand course earlier this week about the same thing. and it just inspired me to put a video out there almost to serve as a reminder of what I'm really talking about when I do these videos that focus on a minute aspect of running a print on demand business. You know, like if you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, you, you know, it's like I have my full courses where it's like everything you need in the order you need it structured perfectly. And then I have my YouTube where it's like, I can just talk about whatever, whatever I'm feeling inspired to talk about that day. And I talk about like little minute puzzle pieces of the big puzzle. And in this video, I, I just want to talk about what the big puzzle really is. And I'm going to talk about it at a high level. And this is just my interpretation. There's no right or wrong way of going about. Well, <laughs> there's a wrong way to go about it, but there's no, I guess, single right way of going about running a print on demand business and being successful. So what I just want to talk about is my interpretation of being successful as a print on demand seller and like my personal pursuits. And I'll give you a little insight into the logic that I apply to each of these decisions that I make. And, you know, I was doing the consulting call today and you know, 30 minutes is not a lot of time to get into the nitty gritty, but I wanted to make sure I communicated like what I think is really important, right? If we have a limited amount of time, it makes the communication of uh, important, like really important things. It's like a priority. You have to s communicate the most high priority things first. And it helps put things in perspective for me. And I wanted to just kind of communicate the same things to you guys while it was fresh on my mind since I had talked about it a few times this week already. Now, this is my high level condensed basic definition of what I like to call playing the game. If you want to be successful selling print on demand, and we say print on demand, but let's be honest, it's really about running an e-commerce business. Um, to me at least. So the first thing that you guys need to do, and if you wanna take notes, this is gonna be pretty concise. I don't wanna say it's gonna be a short video because I have a tendency to go off on tangents and talk pretty long, but I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, the first thing you need to do is follow the customers, right? If you are not selling on a platform that customers, and when I say customers, I mean potential customers. If you're not on a platform that people go to with the intention of buying, then your job is twice as hard as it needs to be. Because then you gotta put your marketing hat on and you have to go convince people on Facebook or wherever to stop whatever they were doing, which I know you guys that browse social media um, can relate that that's basically what happens on social media. You go there to do one thing, five minutes later you're like, what the heck did I come here to do? And why am I looking at pictures of you know dog memes or something, right? But you know, if you just follow the customers, meaning go to websites like Amazon. Amazon gets qualified traffic, right? People go there often with the intention of buying things. They know what to expect when they go to Amazon. <laughs> it's to purchase things. They know things are for sale. They've got their credit card on file. They've got a gift card balance. They probably pay annually for Prime, like check, check, check. Okay, the uh, barriers of convincing somebody to buy your stuff on Amazon are so much lower than taking somebody from Facebook to some other website that they're not familiar with, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not talking like you can't be successful with Facebook ads and Shopify and all that. I'm just saying that like your job becomes a lot harder then because you have to take on this entire new burden, new challenge, right? So step one, be where the customers are, follow the customers, right? 
it's not like Amazon's the only place, but Amazon is the largest e-commerce destination in the world, and it's a good place to start. Now, the person I was talking to earlier, we were talking about the print-on-demand context, so I mentioned you should probably get on Amazon Merch and Seller Central. So the call started with me auditing their Redbubble shop, but I always make sure to mention, like, don't gauge you being a successful print-on-demand seller based on your Redbubble success. Because guys, what do I always say about Redbubble? Lowest barrier of entry. If it's the lowest barrier of entry, what do you get? You get more competition. So factor that in. Don't don't decide that you're gonna make it or not make it based on Redbubble. Um, give yourself a shot at Etsy at least or Amazon. You know, if you can if you can get into Amazon Merch, that's awesome. So I recommended that they do Amazon Merch and Amazon Seller Central because you guys that subscribe to my channel, you know I publish the monthly income reports and I make no less than, I mean, when I say no less than, I'm talking like the bare, bare minimum, no less than $1,000 a month profit selling print on demand through Seller Central. That's in addition to Amazon Merch, okay? And Amazon Merch, I've been averaging, you know, no less than 2,500 a month this year. I, I, I might crack three, I mean, I'm not at my computer, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna crack three grand this month, uh, knock on wood. So it should be another good month for me on Amazon Merch. So think about that, that's four grand a month from print on demand that I'm doing passively. But did I get here overnight? Of course not, right? It was a journey. And uh, I'm doing a bad job of giving you these things to write down. What I was recommending maybe write down is like, I'm gonna give you kind of like four bullet points, I think, that are very high level, and then I'm gonna talk about them and elaborate in case there are questions. And of course, hit me up in the comments below too if you have any questions or recommendations or disagreements, I'd love to hear them. Um, it always makes for good discourse too. If you do have any suggestions or, or disagreements, it's no problem at all. I won't take it as being argumentative, so hit me up in the comments. But number two, right? So number one, we follow the customers. Number two, and this isn't meant to insult anybody's intelligence because it's gonna sound so basic, but I promise you I'm on this side of things and I'd see people not listening to what I'm about to say. Sell things that people are buying. Isn't that obvious? You're gonna have such an easier time selling something that people are already buying than trying to convince somebody to buy something that they don't know exists. Like sometimes the simplest logic, if we just apply that, I call that being practical, can make a world of difference. So we're gonna follow the customers and we're gonna sell things people are already buying that we know sells, rather than try to be like introducing new things to the market, new concepts. And what do I mean by this? In short, what I mean is validate your niches. If we're talking print on demand context, validate your niches. There, I used this example earlier on the call. If you want to sell a cat t-shirt, you can make up the words on the design, right? You can make them up. And if you're the first person and the only person to ever think of them, then how is anybody going to find you, right? Most likely, they're only going to find you if you are indexed on high-level generic keywords like funny cat shirt or clever cat, whatever. You know what I mean? But like something generic like X cat shirt. By the way, those keywords are gonna be incredibly um, diluted, incredibly, what's the word, I can't think of it, saturated, you know what I mean? So banking on that working is not a good plan. You're much better off high level niche, sub niche, sub niche, sub niche. Okay, this sub niche has made sales and it's only got 30 listings I'd be competing with. Okay, if I'm one of 31, that's not bad. That's how you start to rack up the, the sales at a low level and with evergreens that can sell at any time in the year that aren't tied to a certain holiday or period of time, you know, you start building up your portfolio and all of a sudden you're making repeated sales on autopilot. Because remember, everything with print on demand should be done autopilot if possible, unless there's a huge profit motive that you want to do something manually. But I wouldn't recommend uh, doing a lot of manual stuff, unless you're just getting started, in which case, you know, doing stuff manually is okay. Like offering personalization on Etsy. Um, separate, separate topic though. Subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do an Etsy series soon. I just made a bunch of thumbnails. I was feeling inspired today. It's going to be good. Um, so we're gonna follow the customers. We're gonna sell things that are validated. Oh yeah, last thing. Amazon releases a public data point called BSR, best seller rank. If something has a BSR, that means it's made a sale. So that's validation. The lower the BSR, and this, this data point's updated throughout the day at unknown intervals, but constantly. The lower the BSR, the more sales it has made recently. Okay, so we can get indicators of what has sold and what is selling right now using that data point. It's so valuable. It's awesome that Amazon uh, does that for us. So now we've got those two things. Follow the customers, sell things that are selling. Now the next one is we need to play the game when it comes to designing. And this one, I know that this is probably the one thing that people might have opposition in the comments. If you guys, when I say people, sorry, you might have an opposition, you might have an opposing view. No problem. I invite it. I welcome it. It feels weird me trying to tell you 
how to do your designs, right? Because isn't designing subjective? It is. We all like different things. We like different designs. Um, but I'm not trying to tell you like how to go about actually designing. What I mean is I like to boil things down into simplicity. So if you're going to write a little note here, just write, if people can't read or see what my graphic is from the thumbnail in search results, I will not be successful. And then vice versa. If they can read it or can recognize what's going on in my design from the thumbnail, meaning they didn't click and go to the listing page and see the zoomed in view or the bigger view from the thumbnail in search results. If you can't get clicked in the search results because people can't read the text or don't know what your design is, you're never, I mean, it's, it's gonna be so much harder to be successful, guys. You know, this is the game. I don't make the rules, right? So you're hearing it from me. Please don't get mad at me. I didn't make the rules, but this is just, these little optimizations can make a world of difference. And I mean, trust me, there's way more to it than what I'm gonna give you in this video, but at the core, these things matter so much. You can't skip them, all right? We all need to be aware of them. All right, so follow the customers, sell things that are selling, make sure our thumbnails are good. And I mean, on Amazon, let's say, or Amazon Merch, let's say, you can't customize your thumbnail, but you can make your designs bigger, right? So you can't change the thumbnail. You only get the thumbnail that Amazon Merch generates, but you can change your design. So make your design as big as possible in that box, right? Just play the game. It's gotta be unique. Your strategy's tailored to each platform. And Amazon Merch should be your top priority because that's got the highest profit potential. After that, guys, what's left? It's really just to understand the algorithms, the search algorithms of the marketplaces you're selling on. Now. That's like opening Pandora's box. Do I wanna talk for another 30 minutes about algorithms and each marketplace? Not right now. But what I really mean is, you know, if I had to boil this down to, to a uh, concise, short, short explanation, I'd say your title in almost every search algorithm is weighted heaviest. Meaning if somebody searches for, you know, this is a bad example, but like funny cat shirt, and the title of your design is funny cat shirt, that is an exact match. So as far as a computer programmer writing an algorithm to determine what should show up based on what a customer searched and what a seller has uploaded, when you see an exact match in the heaviest weighted, um, you know, cause title is, is variable, right? But it's like the heaviest weighted variable length keyword, relevant keyword containing database field that is a title that we control. You're like, okay, when we're writing this algorithmic score that determines who ranks at the top, having an exact match in the title or a phrase match, like maybe it's funny cat shirt, comma, insert some sub niche in the cat, cat niche, right? So some additional text. And maybe the additional text is what's actually in the design. But you're assisting the algorithm in understanding what search queries that customers type are relevant to your listing. So try to mimic what customers would type into the search bar and include it in your title where it's weighted heaviest. All right, now there's much more to it than that. Like you can run ads, you don't have to run ads, but you can run ads. But if you just start there, try to assist the algorithm in matching what customers will search, you'll start to see more sales roll in. And it's gonna be hard to directly attribute them just to your keyword strategy in just your title. And again, there's more to it than the title. There's descriptions, bullets, um, backend tags, you know what I mean? There's way more that we could talk about, but at a high level. This video, I didn't want it to run on forever. I'm not gonna let it. I think we just covered everything that I think needs to be stated as like a baseline understanding that we all must have to be successful. And um, oh yeah, and then one last thing that I can extrapolate out from everything I've just told you is guys, occupy as much internet real estate as possible. Occupy as much internet real estate as possible. How hard are you making it for people to give you money? Think about that for a second. How hard are you making it for people to give you? I mean, uh, seriously though, let that resonate. If you're only on one platform and it's hard for people to like keyword search and find you, it's gonna be hard for you to make sales. But if you sell in a lot of different niches, good keywords, do your validation, et cetera, basically check every box that we just talked about, you're gonna be in good shape, all right? So I think that's really it. That's all I wanted to talk about, guys. Do me a favor, if you made it this far in the video, let the YouTube algorithm know that this video provided some value by hitting the like button and somehow like 56, 57, 58% of you aren't subscribed on average. So if you wanna hit that red button, that would be awesome as well. Like I said, I'm gonna drop a really good Etsy series soon. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.